In this video, we're going to look at a sample AP Physics 2 free response question, which comes from Unit 5, dealing with magnetism. And this is a publicly released question. It reads, The figure above shows a particle with positive charge Q traveling with a constant speed V sub 0 to the right and in the plane of the page. So it's moving this way. The particle is approaching a region shown by the dash box that contains a constant uniform field. Remember, a uniform field just, well, is another word for constant. So it's the same strength everywhere inside of here. It says the effects of gravity are negligible. First part of part A says, on the figure below, draw a possible path of the particle in the region if the region contains only an electric field directed down towards the bottom of the page. So if inside of that box, there's a uniform electric field pointed down. The question is like, what path would this positively charged particle take as it enters the field while moving to the right? Well, if the positive charge like just enters the field, it's moving, it's got a velocity vector to the right, that positive charge is gonna feel a force in the direction of the electric field. Since the electric field is pointed down, it's gonna feel a force down. Well, um, it's gonna keep moving to the right horizontally, but because this electric force is pointed down, it's going to accelerate downward. It's going to be kind of like projectile motion, where this electric force is always pointed downward because everywhere in the box, the electric field is pointed down. There will be a negative vertical acceleration, but the horizontal part of the velocity will st still keep going. And so when you put all that together, you essentially get a parabolic shaped curve that's kind of curved down. Part two asks, well, on the figure below, draw a possible path of the particle in the region if the region contains only a magnetic field directed out of the page. So um, I've got dots in red here shown to represent the magnetic field um, that's coming up out of the page. Um, and the question is, well, well, does a charged particle feel a force when it's in a magnetic field? Well, turns out it's only when it's moving in a magnetic field. Because remember, the magnetic force on a moving charged particle is equal to the charge times its velocity times the magnetic field strength that it's in. So this has got a charge Q, it's in an external magnetic field in red there, and it's moving, so it's going to feel magnetic force. The question is, well, what direction does it feel a force when it first enters that field? And like up here, does that force stay in the same direction or does it change direction? Remember, in order to figure out the, if there's, well, the direction that a charged particle feels a magnetic force, you've got to use some version of a right-hand rule. And the version of the right-hand rule that we used, I'm just going to kind of remind you, zoom out a little bit, is um, you, you don't curl your hand for this one. The version that we use, remember, you kind of like leave your hand flat like this. Your thumb points in the direction of the velocity of the particle, so the velocity is moving to the right. So I'm going to put my thumb to the right. And remember, your fingers point in the direction of the external magnetic field. And so I'm going to have to zoom out a little bit more so we can see this. So I've got to point my fingers up because the magnetic field lines, look, are coming up out of the page. My thumb is to the right. The external magnetic field lines are all pointed up. And remember, with this version of the right-hand rule, the direction your palm is facing is the direction that a positively charged particle would feel a magnetic force. If this was a negatively charged particle, it feels it like the direction your the back of your hand is facing. So with a velocity to the right, external magnetic field pointed out of the page, it's going to feel a magnetic force in the direction of the palm, which is down. So I'll zoom back in a little bit here. So using the right hand rule and that's going to work for any version of the right hand rule that you guys were taught or learned but that's the one that we decided to to use when we went through this content so with the velocity to the right the magnetic field lines pointing up it's going to feel a magnetic force down in this direction so it's going to start to curve kind of down kind of like it did up here but let's say it curves and the the particles now here well it's going to be moving now down into the right and if we used our right hand rule again, let me zoom back out. So the magnetic field lines are still up. That's what these fingers are. But now 
the velocity is down to the right, and so the direction of the force, we'll use a pen, is in the palm direction. Now it's kind of down and to the left. Remember that the magnetic force on a moving charged particle is always perpendicular to the particle's velocity. And so now the force is perpendicular to the velocity. Here, let's say the velocity is down, the force is perpendicular. You can see that this magnetic force is always pointed perpendicular to the velocity, always kind of pointed towards this point right here, the center of a circular path. If the sum of the forces on, a, on an object, well in this case a particle, is pointed perpendicular to the direction of the speed at all times, that object, in this case a particle, will follow a circular path. And so this particle, as it moves through this region of a uniform magnetic field, will also curve down, but it won't do it in a parabolic shape. Uh, it'll do it in a circular shape, because here the sum of the forces points inward, or centripetally, and so this thing will have a centripetal or center pointing acceleration because the sum of the forces is pointed towards the center. Here, this is a parabolic path because the acceleration is always in the same direction. In, case, in this case, it's vertically pointed down. Okay, A part three says, for which of the previous situations is the motion more similar to that of a projectile in only a gravitational field near Earth's surface and why? So based on the two different shapes we talked about, the electric field shape or the magnetic, the shape of the particle's path caused by the magnetic field. And if you look at it, like when you throw something or give a, a an object an initial velocity, does it follow a parabolic path directed towards the, the ground, or does it follow a circular path towards the ground? Well, it should be pretty obvious, right? It's going to follow a parabolic path like that. So here's um, how you would kind of write that out. So which one is it and why? So the electric field situation is similar to a projectile in a gravitational field near the Earth's surface. The Earth's gravitational field is uniform in strength, that means it's constant, and pointed downward, and it only causes a projectile to accelerate in the negative y direction with the gravitational force. Remember, this is with near the Earth's surface. As long as you're near the Earth's surface, the gravitational field is about the same strength, and it's going to be something's going to feel the same size force. The electric field situation, similarly, is uniform in strength and causes the moving charged particle to accelerate only in the negative y direction with the electric force pointed down. All right, the last part of this problem, part B, gives us a new scenario. It says, another region of space contains an electric field directed towards the top of the page, so that's gonna be the arrow, and a magnetic field directed out of the page with the dots right there. It says both fields are constant and uniform. A horizontal beam of protons with a variety of speeds enters the region as shown above. So we've got a beam of protons, which means it's composed of individually, well, individual protons moving at different speeds. Some are moving slow into this region, some are moving fast into that region. It says protons exit the region at a variety of locations, including points one and two shown in the figure above. So some of the protons come in the middle and they must follow some kind of curved path up to position one. Some of them must follow a curved path down to position one, right? Well, why would any particle move up? It's, well, or start to curve up? It's only if the sum of the forces on it is positive. Or why would any particle, positively charged particle or any object move down? It's only if the sum of the forces on that object is pointed downwards. And since we have a moving particle in a magnetic field that's pointed up, it's going to feel a magnetic force down like we previously talked about with the right hand roll. And if a charged particle, moving or not, is in, an, is in an electric field that's pointed up, it's going to feel an electric force that's pointed up. So there's going to be two forces on these, each of these protons, and whichever force is larger determines which direction the path of that particle will follow. Will it curve up? or will it curve down? So um, it asks, in a coherent paragraph length response, 
explain why some protons exit the region at point 1 and others exit at point 2. Use physics principles to explain your reasoning. So uh, remember, in AP Physics 2, whenever you have a paragraph length response, um, they want you to use just words. They don't want you to use diagrams and equations. Like you can make reference to those um, in your written response, but this pretty much should be a written response, the kind of the way that I talk through up here. So let's, let me just read what a uh, response would sound like. So when protons enter the region with both fields, they will feel an electric force pointed up because the electric field is pointed up and a magnetic field pointed down according to the right-hand rule. The size of the electric force is the same for all particles because the electric force, or it, only depends on the particle's charge and the electric field strength, which is the same for all of the protons. The magnetic force varies in size for each proton based on the particle's speed. Since the magnetic force depends on the particle's charge, the magnetic field strength, and the particle speed. The particles which exit at point 2 are moving fast and the magnetic force is larger than the electric force so they curve down well in both fields. So that's right here where it curves down to um, position 2 up here. The particles which exit at point 1 are moving slower where the magnetic force pointed down is smaller than the electric force pointed up, so the particles curve upward well in the region with both fields.